Hi guys, so today what we're going to be talking about is the solo model and what we're going to be doing is deriving this solo model. Um, this model was invented by the MIT economist Robert Solo and it is an exogenous growth model. I'll write that down, exogenous growth model. And what, what that, well there's two different models, we've got the exogenous and the end, endogenous. Now, exogenous means that factors that are going to change the curves in this model are caused by the external environment. It's not caused internally. So, without further ado, let's derive this model. So, let's first of all label the axes. So, what we have on the y-axis is the output per labour, and that can be written like this, output per labour. And then on the x-axis, we can call this ca either capital accumulation, capital accumulation, or it depends on your textbook, capital per labour. And this will be represented with a K. So, first of all, let's start off with the main curve and I'll get a different colour for this, get green. And what we're going to be drawing is the production function. So I'll draw the curve and I'll explain why it is this shape. So this is called Y output. Why is this? So essentially as capital accumulates so we have a fixed number of workers we're not we're not doing the production function we're doing it a different way we have a fixed number of workers and as we continue to add capital to these workers obviously the output per labor is going to increase think of it like this let's say there's five people and they're operating on one machine let's say the output's five if you have five machines five times five is going to be 25 the output's going to be much larger however as you can see as you can see i will delete these lines afterwards, but as you can see, this curve begins to flatten off. And the reason this curve begins to flatten off is because as we continually increase in capital, at some point we're going to have less, it's going to be less productive because yes, capital still increasing and yes, output still increasing, but output is increasing at a lower rate. Look at this. So for, let's say, let's call this one unit, we have about that much worth of output. And if we go up here, we have less. And this is called the diminishing marginal returns. Because more machines, it's going to be less productive because we've, got, we've still got this fixed number of workers. So I'll just get rid of all of that, that mess. So that is essentially the output curve. After this, since we have output is increasing, if output's increasing, incomes are going to increase. If incomes are going to increase, savings are going to increase. An increase in savings also means an increase in investment. So I'll draw the investment curve here. And I'll explain why it is also this shape. So I investment. So since savings are increasing, as we know from the circular flow, where we have households and firms, households get paid through factor payments, and then this goes back in domestic consumption, CD, and obviously we have the withdrawals and the injections. What we know from, especially from the classical economics that savings always equals investment so therefore if we have an increase in savings we have an increase in investment and this is just simply due, due to the circular flow model so if this comes up in the exam that's what you say you say it's because of the circular flow model so that's our investment curve and this investment curve also flattens off because of this diminishing marginal rate of returns on the output because incomes are going to slowly get less and less at this point so now that we have this investment increasing and increasing as output increases, 
What we also have is another factor. And this factor, I'll get a purple for this. And for this factor, what we call is depreciation. Good old depreciation that we all see in the balance sheets. So do that there. And I'll explain why depreciation increases like this. So obviously, if we've got more investment, we're going to have more depreciation of the assets because there's obviously more. Now, this depreciation increases with investment because more and more capital is going to be replaced. And this is what we call our replacement investment. So the bigger the capital stock, the larger the amount of replacement investment that is required. So as you can see, if I use a, we'll use this, we'll use the white. As you can see at this point, they're crossing over. So we've got like this, and this. You can see that at a given level of capital accumulation, let's call this K1, will give you a certain level of output, Y1. And that is essentially deriving the solo model, but However, if we were at a point here, we are operating with an output of, let's say, Y0 and an investment, say, I1 with depreciation, D1. You can see that there is a gap between the investment and the depreciation. And... What this means is that there is more investment than replacement investment. And what this will cause, we'll call this K0, what this will cause, this will generate as an output of Y0. So as, um, as investment increases, we're going to have more and more replacement investment. That's just going to bring us to K1 and Y1. And at this point here, I forgot to mention this, at this point here, it is called our... Steady state level of national income. Now, if you want the proper definition for this, this is the long run equilibrium level of national income, the level at which all investment is used to maintain the existing stock at its current level. And that is essentially the solo model. And this is obviously. Remember, this is the exogenous model. We can, we'll can we talk about the endogenous model in another video. So I hope this makes sense and make sure to check out the endogenous growth model.